everyone, from BX257 here again with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review and today I'll be taking a look at the 1984 Mountain Howitzer. It's a small battlefield accessory, even though it says battle station, because it's so big it, it fit in with the, uh, I guess the price point of all the other battle stations, so they put it under that label. The Mountain Howitzer set comes with the Howitzer cannon itself an ammo box, three ammo shells which you can put in the um, this cavity of the ammo box but there is no lid to this, this ammo box so they just sort of um, lay in there. A binoculars with tripod. The binoculars itself uh, it has a stock, but uh, it, it doesn't um, permanently click in here. You can, of course, swivel it around, but it, it's also kind of loose and very easy just to kind of lose. So um, watch out for that. The howitzer, like all howitzer cannons, is a breech-fed cannon, and it actually does have a removable breech. There is no stopper here, so once you pull it out, it fairly easy to yank the whole thing completely out and of course the breech has enough hollow space here so you can actually put one of these shells in here and pretend load it up the cannon itself actually has an elevation feature which has a little clicker in here my particular example it, it's a very it's a very soft or, or very weak clicker However, you might find another one which has it being very hard or very stiff, so it actually does make the clicking noise when you elevate it. It also has, well, spinning wheels because it is a mounted frame towed artillery piece. It has the G.I. Joe Universal tow hook here. Oh, and another thing is that. Um, I haven't put this all the way on here. This is actually supposed to go all the way on here and straight to the to the back here. Um, I would caution you not to put the uh, the shells in this way as they can get stuck in there permanently. And if you put this all the way on here, I haven't put it on here because um, I don't I don't want to stress the plastic because it kind of winds up um, going kind of white with stress marks on here. It doesn't look too bad, but it's not quite right. One interesting thing is the box art does show uh, two people manning this howitzer. Although, personally, uh, I think the the usual minimum for howitzer operation is three. And I, I put that reality in there because this is almost directly based on uh, an actual military hardware. So. It winds up being quite a bit like a scaled miniature rather than just a play toy. Here, I'll just uh, have a Rakondo here being the sighter. I'll have Zap being the loader. And Grand Slam, who is also an art artillery expert, should actually be positioning the gun according to the instructions of the sighter. You're probably wondering, what are you supposed to do with all these extra pieces? Unfortunately, the instructions don't say anything. However, I've worked out something very interesting. You could put the box right on here, and underneath the breech is a tiny little lip. So if you rotate the cannon upwards into the cavity, it's actually quite secure. Of course, the tripod can just go right on there like so, and it's, <laughs> it's actually quite sturdy. So you're all ready. hook up your mountain howitzer and carry it around 
with all its equipment. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.